This is a French Air Force two-man pilot survival ration from the late 70s to early 80s. Air Force survival food units. It says on the front, this box contains two food units. It weighs one pound, 3.7 ounces, or 841 grams. It says to open at the top. We'll open at the bottom so we can save the can for display. These things were stowed on Mirage 3s and Dassault Mirage 2000s, fighter and bomber aircraft. It's part of a more comprehensive bailout kit. And this ration is for one man for two days or two men for one day. It says it contains two units. Okay, so let's give it a look. No hiss. Man, it smells fruity. It's not a good sign. Same as 300 euro, too. Okay. Whoa. I hope these guys had better can openers than this. You're out in a survival situation. Take more energy just to open it than the calories inside. Wow. Look at that. Go ahead and work this stuff out. Look at that, Mont Blanc, which is dried out and has leaked. I think it's a meat tube or something. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, that's what that's what's going on there. Some some leakage. Good thing there's a cardboard separator. Potentially kept everything else from getting too fouled up. Look at that. Nice. Go ahead and just work this out best as I can here. So organized, maximizing the space. Vitamin C tablets. Two packs of those. Let's see if we can get this out. Too many issues here. There's a lot of damage. Look at this. I mean, there are things that are okay right next to things that aren't. That is always exciting. Oh, nice. A chocolate bar. Oops, something flew. What is that? A pemmican bar. And. When they say two units, it would have been nice if they were enclosed, you know, individually. But then it would have taken up more space. So when they say two units, it would be divided. These components would be divided. And, oh, everything's so fruity in there. I just, I don't even know what to say. Okay, let's see here. Uh. All right. There's that nice can. There's another pack of what looks to be salt tablets in there. I'm gonna leave those in because they are stuck. I don't wanna cut myself. So let's close this up and just probably pretend none of this happened because it looks like a disaster. I mean, it'll be a, a miracle if anything is consumable at all in this. All right, let's get a good look at it. These are fuel tablets. So you can start a fire, cook some of this stuff, heat it up in this container. Pemmican. Two packets of coffee, which sound like they're okay. Cool. That is soluble bouillon. Nice. Vitamin C tabs. Sugar cubes. The caramels. They don't look like they're good. They're fully oxidized. They would have been a lighter color. Get two matchbooks, two packs of water purification tablets, each one 
likely treats one liter of water. These are biscuits. Air Force Survival Food Units. This box contains two units of food. Two tubes of Mont Blanc survival food, two packs of cookies, two packs of caramels, two bars of chocolate, two blocks of pemmican, sugar, soup broth, milk nuggets, vitamin C tablets, two packs of salt tabs for rehydrating, water purification tablets, and soluble coffee. The non-consumables are four solid fuel tabs and two matchbooks. In principle, these two survival food units are planned either for a man for 48 hours or for two men for 24. Except in the event that specific instructions are given to you on the absorption of these, if you consume one survival food unit per day, you must absorb the 12 tablets. If you consume two units per day, don't consume any salt tablets. You can consume the pemmican either dry or after rehydrating in about a quarter of a liter of hot water. Nice. So this thing's from 1976. It's looking about as good as it's going to get. All right, let's get sat on outre. Nice. Okay, let's first start off with checking out that coffee. Ugh. One more. Nice. Okay. Is it a spray dried or freeze dried? Four grams. Nice little portion. Smells okay in there. You know, the out oh, the outside of the packaging still smells rank of this stuff. That is a nice looking spray dried coffee. Fine granule. It smells rich. Where's a spoon we need? Ooh, that coffee smells great. Walk back in here and well, that stuff's robust. I gotta try a sip right off the bat here. Hopefully it's not too hot. Whoa! It's just a bit too hot, but that is incredible coffee. I mean, it's a four gram portion. That's why, you know, if you add it to like 10 or 12 ounces, this is stimulating. It tastes like it's freshly brewed. Like a freshly brewed, strong French roast. It's a dark roast. Spray dried. Dude, I'm saving that other package. That is amazing. Okay, let's go ahead and check out this chocolate bar. Oh, man. It smells like onion soup, body odor, no big deal. Oh, it has some bloom to it. And, oh geez, is that a windmill? I don't know about this. I mean, it got kind of wet, like there was a pinhole in the packaging Oh, it smells terrible. Hold on, let's just try out a little bite. Hmm. That's really not so... Oh. It used to be good. Super rancid from, like, an absorption of this. I mean, the Mont Blanc, that was... This thing would have stored beautifully had it not been for this tube of rot. You know, a vitamin C tablet. I'll cure what ails you here. Let's see. Ooh. Hey, that smells like vanilla and oranges. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, a tasty little fruit candy. All right. How about some soup? Like, wait. Yeah, this one seems fine. It's bouillon. Maybe I'll just go with the other one. Oh, that is fine in there. That is beef bouillon. And that'd be great on a rainy day when you're cold and you just want something foody. Oh, that stinks though. Hmm. Seems like it might be all right.
oh wow, that's still fine. That's perfectly fine. That's a delicious beef broth. Look at that. It's not overly strong. There's a slight onion flavor. It's very savory. It's not too salty. Again, it's not overpowering. It's really nice. Let's check out the biscuits. Ooh, they look like cookies. Oh, they're definitely rancid. Nice cellophane and foil. Too bad it wasn't tri-laminate. Oh, maybe it kind of was. Like a nice paper parchment almost on the inside. Foil and cellophane. And they are really something. They're, they're, they're definitely not edible anymore. Like, Gomez. They feel like they've absorbed moisture from, like, another component. Uh, well, I almost feel like saving one for display. I think I will. Dip it in epoxy. Kind of needs it. Seems like they've really absorbed moisture from the Mont Blanc. Which, Mont Blanc's just like a brand name. I mean, because Mont Blanc's a place. Or a dessert. It is not, that is not dessert. Pemmican. A Native American, you know, classic. Right here. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, not much in the way of layering. And there is definitely a bleeding out of moisture content and it just it smells fruity and foul definitely a shame because this thing looks like it was pretty cool back in the day it is oxidized that is meat and definitely not safe to eat um I'll just tip touch it to the tip of my tongue just the tip and Hmm. That is not edible. Not at all. I mean, if it is, it's fooling me. Yeah, that's just one big mess. We're going to put it at the top here, and I think I'm going to skip the sugar cubes. I'll just save them for display. Okay. Let's go ahead and add some water to it. Whoa. What happened? Ugh. Whoops, slopping it up. Got got water all over that chocolate. That chocolate looks great now. I mean, I will say, it almost looks edible. Really, this is kind of a disaster. I mean, look at that. You can make a gruel with this. Probably should have broken it up a little bit more, but, you know, you only live twice. Let's get down and dirty with some, what is this, 44-year-old pemmican. I mean, I've eaten pemmican that was... 70 years older than this and tasted better so it goes to show that this didn't hold up that'll absorb quite a bit and we'll set this over here okay what is this thing some kind of nougat candy perhaps oh whatever yeah i believe it was a nougat candy that is oh smelling like this, the caramels have gotten wet from my sink, washing them. So nothing was really airtight. And you see how that is. There's no point in going any further. I mean, oh, everything's smelling the same. Let's take a bite out of the Gomez biscuit. Oh, no, I'm not going to. I'm telling you, if you could smell this. Leaves me with this. What a mess. Yeah. That's more like it. I'm going to have to sharpen and clean my knife. Look at this stuff. A complete disaster. Here, I'm going to just stand over here and drink some coffee. Dude, this thing's a real mixed bag, that's for sure. I'm... Why don't I just come over here with the coffee instead? I think that's what I'm going to do. Let me just take another sip of this beef broth. Bouillon. Dude, this 
stuff's great. But this, mmm, man, it's a nice dark roast. You could add it to up to 12 ounces and it'd still be quite nice. Like 8 ounces though, and it's great flavor. It's, it's like real coffee. It's not like some kind of imitation instant coffee or something strange. Coffee instant type 1 or type 2, they're great. I love them. You know, it's, it's an acquired taste though, and it's something that if you're not used to it, you could get thrown off by the different nature of it in itself. It's smooth, you know, I mean, unless you, back to this, uh, back to this, it is, it makes this experience worth it. Again, this thing was 300 euro. I bought it from Carlos out in Spain. He's an awesome guy, and I'm, I offered him 300. I just knew that, like, if I didn't get it from him, like, I would have had to jump through more hoops to get that same ration. It's a throwback. It's a throwback. That that tube of beef or meat concentrate, it's, um, that was innovative in its own right. And for when it was fresh, it was nourishing and hopefully not too salty. I'm not sure. I have a feeling it was kind of bland because you get the salt tablets. Even the beef bouillon itself was not overly salty. It was deli That's delicious beef bouillon. But the biscuits... I don't know. Again, throwback for a survival rash and not exactly effective. Come on, what else? Oh yeah, the, the pemmican. I have a feeling that stuff would have been perfectly fine had it not been absorbing the rot and whatnot of that, you know, burst tuba. It was safe enough. It's not like it was bloating, you know, the whole can. And for all I know, it was just rust and moisture. And when you have something that's foul, it doesn't always mean when something leaked that it was botulism. I keep looking over because I'm forgetting what's in it. The caramels and the nougat bar, that carried along into the 1990s with French survival rations. And then by the 2000s, they were switching over to, you know, commando bars only. Commando bars are from the 90s. And those are great and they're built to last. They, they have hydrogenated oils and it is stable, like a wax binder type stabilizer. And they last a long time. Those salt towels are, I mean, like, they're effective. They are, you know, going to be easy to just down, kind of, you know, like, certain things like ibuprofen can be candy coated or, you know, various pills and candy coated so you can down it a lot easier. It's going to produce saliva and not, like, absorb moisture from your mouth. It's just to give you that slight glucose boost and, you know, just ever so slight but it still serves for what it always was. Salt tablets go back to World War II and being extremely effective for desert climates and even more so tropical. Um, as long as you have enough water available, that's something you're gonna want and need. Um, the coffee's great. You get eight grams of a delicious, you know, instant coffee. I'm savoring this. I mean, even when it, it's still warm, but even when it cools off, it's, it's, it's truly decadent coffee. The chocolate's great, typically built to last. If it had a little bit more layered packaging, like if it had an extra layer, and if that packaging was thicker, like, that would have been fine. You know how, like, the USMRE has that tri-laminate packaging? Man, I'm telling you, like, that stuff is built tough. And this is, like, before that, this is still in that... 50s, 60s, 70s range of survival ration packaging technology and, you know, sustenance theory as to what, you know, a down pilot or soldier in any survival situation that these things are used for will need. And these days, it's just concentrated food bars and stuff that are less thirst provoking and designed to, you know, sustain an individual when, when you know, water can be critically or at least substantially limited, you know, depending. Critically limited is when it's just hard candies, actually. So these food bars, again, you know, for one, when water is limited. And the bouillon, 
It's not too salty. It's really nice. If you were low on water, you wouldn't be taking as much in the way of salt tabs. You could still probably have some beef broth to make yourself feel like you're having something that's, you know, a little bit foody, a little bit of a savory item to warm you up and to be a nice morale boost. You could put it directly in that can to heat up if you need to, if you didn't have a mess kit, which very good chance you won't. Like, you might have, like, a metal cup or something, but you're going to be having to rely on that can. That's why I feel like a lot of these survival rations, when they're not in metal containers, it's a disadvantage. Like a cardboard box and stuff like that. What if you don't have any means to heat up water? You're going to be, you know, just putting water in that cardboard box or whatever it is, and having chicken stock or beef stock that is lukewarm or cold. You know, or just eat the stuff straight out of the pack. It's just not as nice. Food pack of survival general purpose is like that these days. So what do I think about this thing? Innovative. Transitional. A little bit of a throwback still nonetheless. The nougat bar. You know, stuff like that. That's what would have gone first. That's what went stale before the Mont Blanc tube of meat or whatever that is by this point wheat and then the biscuits went stale before they stirred to absorb the moisture of the meat tube i just keep calling it that but that's what it is i'm surprised the beef stock was still fine it was that packaging paper plastic foil no pinholes that's what happened with that the rest is and same with the the coffee the coffee package, you know, stayed fine. The vitamin C tablets, you know, with a little dextrose, sugar, you know, sh sucrose, dextrose, binders, vitamin C. That's nice. I mean, with sugar, you're not going to fully absorb that vitamin C, though. Like, I don't know. I just think that that is, again, kind of an outdated premise. It would have been more effective to put that vitamin C, like, even in the coffee. Like, a sorbic acid mixed with the coffee would have... You know, the old coffee instants are like that. It also helps preserve it longer. Not like this needed it. It was fine. Man. Best coffee in a ration. Hiding in a metal container of rust and rot, essentially, with like a couple components that are still fine. That's what makes this interesting to me. Well, one of the like 20 different reasons why I find this interesting. You truly do never know what you're going to get with these things. So this was a two-man pilot survival ration from 1976 used by the French Air Force. You know this right here, you know, if it had not absorbed this, I would have been chowing down. The biscuits, good for display. We'll save these. Not this one, though. A fascinating transitional survival ration that had moved these advancements and transitions along. We can see what holds up and what doesn't with packaging and components. And this one, rancid oils, rancid meat with too high a moisture content, eating through metal. Not enough layering to the packaging that could prevent the absorption of other things that are rotting or going foul or what have you. It's four months later, that other Air Force survival food unit was a complete mess. Nothing was edible. Anyway, this one was about the same amount of money. It was like 350 bucks in trade, including the shipping. All right, let's give it a look. Oh boy. No hiss. It doesn't seem like it's in quite as bad a shape as the last one, but these meat tubes are just nasty. So there's that. Let's get this one out. Yeah, it's not as bad. I'm grateful. Whoa, this one didn't leak. Oh yeah, it did. Definitely not going to consume any of this, but 
biscuits. Yeah, this one's way nicer than the last one. I mean, it's kind of stinky. It smells like some like beef broth or something in there, but it's not so bad. Caramels. It's the kind of thing you could cut your hand getting this stuff out if you're not careful. Water purification tablets. Yeah, a bunch of those. 16 total. Each one treats a liter of water. And your contents and instruction sheet. And then this, you would boil water in there. Use this as a handle. You could use it for cooking. It's really not bad. It's a pretty nice design. Okay, so there's everything laid out. Gotta say, this thing is beautiful compared to the last one. Not bad. All right, let's get sat on your tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off with checking out that coffee. This one opened up on the bottom when I removed it from the can. Look at this. And it's still fine. Oh, yeah. You kind of see it down there. Really fine, dark, spray-dried granule. It smells like beef. All right. Let's just go all out. Enjoy both. This is gonna make a nice strong coffee. We'll also check out some bouillon. Oh, well that's that's a shame. Let's check out the other one moisture you got to it it's compromised and I believe both of them are that the same let's see oh yeah well a big old glass of coffee I like to put it in a glass instead of like a mug so you can actually see it a lot of people still wonder why Then the biscuits. Oh yeah, they they're rancid. Rancid oils. Smell like fruit. Like a sweet smell. It's not a good sign. Those are definitely not edible. And really like almost I mean they're like soggy. Look at that. They just just like the last ones and the nougat love the blue wrapper that's a nice touch a little morale boost right there you know you're crash landed you're like on a deserted island just you and a bunch of coconuts and you can't even get to the coconuts they're too high up on the tree so you just enjoy a nice nougat bar and a blue wrapper that would make you feel better about everything. Look at that. That's no good. At least it's in better shape than the last one. The last one you couldn't even recognize. I mean, this. Oh, <laughs> the way that smells, it's just like the biscuit. I'm not going to try that. There's absolutely no way. Oh, well. Hold on. I just... Hmm. Oh, never mind. It was sweet at first, but then. Oh. Well, can't say I didn't try. Well, look how like, squishy it is. It's kind of satisfying. It's like pillow soft. Caramels. That's, that's a sure thing. I can just tell by the way it's oxidized. It's gotten darker. These things used to be lighter back in the day, I'll bet. 20 bucks. These days dark and oxidized caramel i mean like if it was a chocolate caramel i wouldn't be as nervous but it just says caramel and it's double wrapped that's not going to save it wait it's all sticky let's see oh it actually looks pretty good no it doesn't here Hmm. 
that's still edible. It really is. Like, I mean, sorry. That's kind of gross. Mm. Oh, wait. I can taste that the milk has turned. And sugar is such a fantastic preservative. It's just couldn't do anything with that, really. I've had worse caramels, I'll say that. Let's check out this chocolate bar. 25 gram bar. I'm excited about this. I have high hopes. I really do. It's a little bit bloomed, but that's all right. Here, let's give it the old flip. How does it look on the other side? Oh, that, that's really nice. Look at that. So how is this going to be? From the way it smells, it smells like beef. Mm, that's really not too bad. Um, that's a nice, like, mild dark chocolate. It's not like a super strong dark chocolate. It's not like cheap milk chocolate either. But it has absorbed a little bit of that beef flavor. I'm not too sure about it. It's just take a couple bites and that seems reasonable, but anything more than that and I don't know. It really is a little bit sketchy to say the least. These vitamin C candies, they're packaged properly. I think this is probably okay. We have nice and strong. This coffee's eight grams of spray dried. That tastes like espresso. A big old glass of espresso. A lot of this stuff you just don't see in survival rations these days. Everybody's gone to the compressed food bars and, you know, variations of compressed food bars. Sometimes it's just one kind. This era was when morale and having some normalcy Let's check out the pemmican was really important you know and in the scope of design of a survival ration the pemmican is very oxidized and darkened breaks up nicely let's still add some water that will absorb most likely Oh yeah, nothing but the best. So then, the matches. I'm gonna need to strike a match because it smells like beef in here, like old beef. Oh yeah, that's action packed. Wow, those are some pretty good matches, see that? They have some wind resistance. Now caramel. This seems reasonable. The milk solids are starting to turn a little bit, but not to the point where it's dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, it's really not bad. I'll just stick with one. They're not really appealing anymore. They're very oxidized. The dried milk in it is in a process of turning, but it's not to the point where it's dangerous or anything. These vitamin C tablets are nice. A nougat bar. I mean, yeah, this. couple bites isn't a big deal. But the almonds are a little bit rancid. They actually stayed preserved to a degree being like embedded in that sugar because the rest is like pure sugar. And most of this is carbohydrates and fat, but then it has a fair amount of protein. Like this, 57% carbohydrates, 8% protein, 7.5% fat, and then 25% water. 
and it has 300 calories for 100 grams. This is 95 grams. Whatever this stuff is, it's mysterious. The chocolate. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still edible. It's just, it's picked up the flavor of the other leaked meat tube. I really wish the other one didn't burst. I think this whole thing would have been in significantly better shape had that not happened. I can't help but to wonder when it happened. This thing was still stored in better conditions than the last one I had. That one was 300 euro. Yeah, and this one's like 350 bucks. 150 in shipping plus the items I used in trade, which totaled out to about like $200 in value. And I probably paid like give or take a few bucks on that. I mean, it was pretty much right on the money for what it was worth. Love the coffee. But this is a very transitional survival ration. A lot of this stuff had been in rations already for decades. And this thing is like not really that special in that regard. I think I added too much water for the presentation of the pemmican. I made like a really disturbing porridge and it's not edible. I'll say that. I won't even try that. The rest of this, you could try it out without risking your health. The biscuits, had they been triple wrapped and if they didn't add all that shortening, if it was just flour and water, like ingredient wise, hard tack, it would have still been edible. But this Gomez brand biscuit, it's no good. The salt tablets, very effective. It's the only time I've ever seen candy coated salt tabs. The nougat bars in a blue wrapper. But yeah, this thing evolved into a much more effective and built to last survival ration by the late 80s, early 90s. We checked one of those out. It had stuff like this. The commando bar, which these are still in production. That is a stable food item. This, not so much. The chocolate absorbed this stuff. And this is gonna get you. Look at that. Oh. It's like something out of a bad horror movie. Oh, it stinks. It smells like really bad body odor. Oh, and it's coming out the top too. Look. Oh. That. What I call a grand finale. So this stuff, it's perfectly edible. Let's take a bite. Well, well, I'm just kidding with you. I'm not going to eat that. Well, gotta say, this is a real mixed bag. And for a total of about $700, I say it was worth every penny. It really was a neat transitional survival ration. It really, the 1980s brought more advanced compressed food bars and other food tech that the 70s and before it just did not have. This was like utilizing a lot of what World War II survival rations were providing. And really no different, just minus cigarettes. And I would say that's about all this thing was missing. Take out the Mont Blanc and throw in some smokes or something like that and maybe a pack of prophylactics and you'd call it a day. What an experience. You couldn't stockpile something like this and rely on it for decades. That is important for rations, I feel. To be able to stockpile them, not having to worry about the degradation of nutritional value and the increase of danger just by eating it. All in all, it was a fascinating look at a ration that you just won't see anything like this these days. No country produces survival rations like this anymore. This is a thing of the past. We'll never see anything quite like this again. And this was actually quite an unusual one with this tube of concentrated food 
and pemmican. That's really nice. They gave you two cubes of pemmican. This thing has a fair amount of protein. I'd have to say probably has about 12% protein at least, up to 15 for the entire ration. And that's generous. And the salt tabs and the water purification tablets, they give you an ample amount of what you're going to need so you're not going to be getting dehydrated. You're not going to be going hungry. All in all, I say this was an excellent ration for the time. Hey Claire, thanks again for making this one happen. And Carlos, a couple of years ago I bought this last one from him. As for this, it turned into what is now energy gel, commando bars, and compressed food bars that are vacuum sealed in a tri-laminate package. And this thing has absolutely improved over the years. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. And I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. Alright, cool. See ya.